Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Trevor Lawrence, urban planning gone wrong, fired up. Let's get into it. Welcome to the QB School. Urban planning gone wrong, Trevor Lawrence. Don't let it happen to you. Got to survive this. A little double move down here at the bottom of the screen. Got a chance to be a really special play. Just overthrows it a tick. But again, we're having pass pro issues. Potentially watching this, I thought maybe he could set his feet and make this a better throw. Probably not. Got a great opportunity there for a big play down here at the bottom of the screen. Now, from this corner, he's pressing. He bails off. He grabs the hell out of him. This is a penalty. You, you got to have that right there. He's grabbing him. He hooks him. That's a penalty. Now, the route I love here, a few different things. I like the initial, what I'm used to calling a burst release. So we're going to go in, up, and that really sells that we're going out. You get this burst release here. It creates more space at the sideline. Corners know it. Then you sell that double move and hit him on the way up. Now, quarterback-wise here, I thought maybe he could climb, set his feet, flip his hips, and make that throw. Definitely could do it later in the game. Right here, probably not. This is really just one of those, an opportunity for a special play. Not there. Uh, but that's definitely pass interference, defensive holding, whatever you want, impacts the route. Again, just a pocket movement here, presence, nice job being able to get past that first part. Again, protecting the ball, two hands, dip and rip that back shoulder, go from there to being able to make that throw vision down the field. Now maybe, you know, could, could he get here and flip his hips? I don't know. He's going to take a shot there either way. I just thought, man, that was close to being a really special play. Love to see those types of things for him start to click. Next one down here. This is, again, should be pass interference on the corner down here to the bottom. But it's really on here because of what the quarterback's doing footwork technique-wise from the pocket. So let's watch this thing from behind again. This is three-step quick game from Gunn. For some reason, he looks like he's catching it, pausing, looking right, and throwing left. This is no bueno. You do not want this in your quick game. Catch. Look to the opposite side, take one step, and throw a blind quick out the other way. This has got disaster written all over it. Now, he might think he's hot, but if he's really trying to go from right to left or left to right in the quick game, it's a recipe for disaster. So this is just all stick. We're running quick outs and stick routes inside. Again, look at the corner down here to the bottom. He gets it early. I'm not a Jacksonville homer, but that's back-to-back -back clips on this video of what should be a defensive penalty. But we get press up top. Now maybe he's thinking he's going to convert it to a go or fade. But I just get really nervous when I see quarterbacks make these types of plays. That's just is something that you are living on the edge doing stuff like that. And that is going to translate into disasters. Right here gets fortunate that it's even a completion. But again, you start seeing some of these things seep into it. Now this is a really nice one. Third and three. Beautiful deep out to the field. Love the footwork, love the ball, love the timing, love the anticipation. Capital A here. One, two, three, no hitch. Let it rip, push it outside the numbers, right on target. So again, I'll pause this thing at the top so we can see it. See exactly how he lets this thing go. Back foot in the ground. Look at the wide receiver up top. Not even close to out of his break yet. Lays that thing out towards the sideline, up on his face. Beautiful. And if it wasn't there, you can see underneath, they're working those kind of like double whips or reverse arrows with that incoming. Nice little left to right. Just love the anticipation here, the accuracy. Like the call too, getting it out of your hands quickly. Other thing to pay attention to here, and this is just a schematic philosophical thing, is you've got multiple throws at the sticks. So when I'm talking about this is third and three, right? We get this deep out up top where the ball ends up going. Great. If that wasn't there, what else would there be? Whip or reverse arrow here. Whip, reverse arrow, and then this kind of deep end. So everybody's got a chance for a first down. We've got runaways versus man. We've got a leverage out. Just a really nice concept to be able to dial up. I love taking shots just a tick past the sticks. You can see the sticks there at the 35. We're throwing this thing at the 43. So again, those defenders are sitting on those sticks on third down. They're smart dudes. They get coached. Take a peek here at this front. 
They get, they've got the ability to bring six here, right? We've got six pass protecting. We should be good to go. Now, this will come back to get us later in the game. But that's pitcher perfect right there. Third down quarterback in Sundays. So next one here is a bit of a reverse pass. So we're going to pitch it back to the quarterback. Then we're going to take a shot at the post. It's not there. And we should get the wheel for a massive play here. But for me, whether it's the tight end running the route up the wrong lane or up the wrong landmark or the design of the play, either way, this wheel is too close to the middle of the field and doesn't get the width that it needs for this kind of pseudo hole shot. So what I'm talking about is this wheel that shifts down here that when he comes out of this fake, so we're going to come out here and we're going to fake, 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 and then run this wheel. To me, it does not get near enough width. So first to understand this thing, we are going to fake the reverse here. He's going to get it, pitch it back to the quarterback. Great. We're going to have a post here, and that post is going to do two things. One, give us a shot for a touchdown. Otherwise, it's going to hold that middle field player, hopefully, and take this corner with him. So then when we come out of here, so we're going to come out here, fake, 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 and run this wheel. We want this wheel to not be run up the numbers or near the numbers. We want this thing to get some width and push almost up the sideline. Why? Because when we come out here and get more width, it creates spacing versus time and distance here for this middle field player. If he sniffs it out and he can go collision this thing if it's near the numbers. If it's a little bit wider, the track is probably longer and he's got to run farther to be able to get over to that wheel area. So it's really important for that wheel track to be able to get enough width to make that middle field player's life really difficult. And you can see for me that wheel just comes too vertical. He's looking and he's on the numbers as opposed to splitting the difference between the bottom of the numbers and the sideline or getting almost on the sideline like a whole shot. And then you can see that middle field player is able to come over and collision the ball, which should be a big explosive chunk play instead is a great defensive play and it has nothing really to do with the quarterback it has everything to do with either the tight end execution or the offensive design the offensive architecture the call but man that should be a big play next one here one of a number of interceptions and this is really just a bummer on a number of different levels now without being in the quarterback room for sure i can't tell you 100 percent but 99.9 .9 sure this is two jet flanker drive screen to the tailback 25. you only throw this flanker drive if you're hot and so i think he throws it a little hard regardless but i don't know why the hell he throws it it's a screen it's a screen i mean everybody's blocking look at the wide receiver up top blocking wide receiver down here at the bottom running the basic blocking the center obviously blocking the guy who's got the back and man-to-man -man coverage. I mean, what? I'm not sure what technique that center is using there. The statue. <laughs> I mean, it's. <laughs> I don't know, man. But the decision here, this, you know, I, I want Trevor Lawrence to be o able to overcome the start in Jacksonville with the crew he's got there. But to me, this is on the quarterback. You know, there I've played this play a number of times. Seen a number of guys play this play, and. Never seen it played like this. So what, what am I talking about? Two jet flanker drive. Two jet is the protection. That usually means that we are sliding away from the back. So the back's here. We're going to slide these three for these three. Now I have seen, specifically far back in the day, used to make the call where then the slide would go here and he would like to throw the hot off this guy. So make this guy hot. Now I'm not saying he does this here, but just understand the construct of this thing. So it's the flanker drive part of it is right here. He's coming off the screen. But the only time you want to throw this is if you're hot. And so the hot here on two jet without changing the declaration would be if this guy came and the guy who's off the screen. If both of them come, then you need to throw this drive route hot right here. Two lines through it makes an H. You're welcome. Hot. And the reason Favre used to change it was because he used to like to make this guy hot. So he would change the declaration to make the line go here. So now these three would be going here, here, and he would be going here. Because now if this guy comes on any sort of pressure, Brett used to think that he could buy enough time to then throw the drive way over here, closer to where this is thrown here. So he would buy time and throw it over here as opposed to throwing it too hot over here. So just understanding the placement of the throw, that's the kind of detail that goes into this play. This play has been around forever. 
but he's not hot here. I don't know why the hell he throws this thing. He throws a fastball, goes off the guy's face. If he were to throw the screen, it would be a big play out the other way. A big play. So again, you know, is this on the coaching? Is this on Trevor Lawrence? I put a lot on that this is on Trevor Lawrence. He's not hot. Don't throw that. Look at the screen to the right. Bad things happen. Also throws just a heat seeker right there, right off the guy's grill. The guy makes a nice catch, but, you know, I'm no bevel apologist here, but, you know, what's he supposed to do? This is a great call. Throw the screen. You can't be going rogue. You know, I'm not sure what the hell that was. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I certainly appreciate the support for the channel. Then if you want even more quarterback school content, hop over to the quarterback school Patreon community, really trying to create the environment of exactly what it feels like in an NFL quarterback room. All sorts of detail, breaking down pass protection, concepts, footwork, coverages, everything. If that sounds like you, check out the quarterback school Patreon community, usually three to four videos a month. And then if you're looking for the absolute premium content, looking to take your football knowledge game to the next level, check out the quarterback school courses, have a number of different courses, have a free course on the quick game, have courses on pass protection, tempos, RPOs, how to beat every coverage. If you are looking to take your game to the next level, check out the quarterback school courses. As for this one, let's keep it going. Next one here, another nice one. I don't know how nice this is. He just gave his guy a shot. The reason I put it on here is, one, you just have to take shots like this. Even if you have guys who you don't think can necessarily win consistently on the perimeter, just give your guys a shot. Good things happen. Pass interference. They'll make a play. I like to see it right here. But take a shot here when he hits the back of his drop. One, two, three. We got double go on the outside. Looks like an over from the slot. Where's he supposed to throw the ball? Who's open? The check down? All right, maybe. Yeah. I got you. Instead, give our guy a shot. Good things happen. Lucky that middle field player doesn't get over there a little bit quicker. But that ball's underthrown. But nobody's winning. It's not like he's missing wide open guys. One, two, three. Get the ball out on time. Slightly underthrown. Whew. Fortunate that middle field player doesn't have another step. My goodness. Next one. First and 20. We are hot. We've got some reason a jerk or double move here. Again, this is a combination, either poor design or poor quarterback execution. Probably both. Six person. Pass pro would be nice here. Instead, we only have five. They've got six threats. All right? We've talked about this a number of different times. I know an outstanding course that goes in significant depth here. The line is sliding one of these ways. Okay, so there's the six. Whatever way that they're sliding, so let's assume that they're sliding this way. So now these are all one-on-one -on -one blocks. So we don't have a whole lot of time regardless. Here, you want this guy, this right tackle, is doing a big duel. He's got the most dangerous of these two. If they both come, you are hot. If he come, and you want the guy who has to run the farthest to be the guy who's the free runner. That means that you want your hot over here. Now you do not want your hot to be what I'm used to calling a jerk route where he comes up. And it ends up being like a pseudo double move. Chatters his feet and then runs away from a guy. You do want it to be the outside route, which is a stop or a hitch. The number one receiver close to the boundary. So, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts. You're hot. You got a free runner. But we can't be throwing our hot to a double move. I mean, what are we doing? And I, I know the guy drops out, but this is the NFL. People drop out. You're hot. disaster just horrific and i'm going to guess that it's decision making from the quarterback the ball should go down here to the bottom you, whether that's a hitch or a stop route i'm going to guess it's a stop route one two three throw now yeah it might not work out either because you got a free runner right in your face but at least you don't take the hit we're not taking picks we're not throwing picks to guys we don't see dropping out from the line of scrimmage we're not throwing hots to double moves i mean this is at, at this point a borderline circus it just looks like it's happening too fast for everybody involved. And it doesn't end there, unfortunately. Third and eight. Next one. Big. I mean, this is one where you just wish you had back for a number of different reasons. I love the ability to go try to make this play. 
This is a 50-yard bomb running to your left. Now, it's even better if you've got Herbert's club in the bag and you can flip your hips and launch this thing 60 yards because if you do that, it leads off Sports Center. If you don't, it ends up being a pick and you think, gosh, I should have just ran it. But do you have time here to flip your hips? Probably. You do. Or at least I think you do. <laughs> Whatever the hell that's worth. As opposed to running to your left trying to throw the ball as far as you can coming up 10 yards short bummer bad but the thing that really hurts is watching this play and where it should go so they're running a variation of what i'm used to calling scissors people call it whatever you want sale we're running a post in a corner and then something in the flat we are going to high low this flat player now they're going to run some variation of tampa 2 out of this thing come out of here this dude is standing by himself Standing by himself. There's no pressure. Must make this read. That must. No excuses. Can't blame anybody else. Urban planning. Disaster. Yelling at co assistant coaches. Whatever. The ball. The ball has to go to the corner. Has to. Move your feet. Slide to the left. And throw the ball to the corner. That's wide ass open in the NFL. Again. I, I get it. It looks muddy. Right there. You're at the top of the drop. Let it develop and throw it out there. Throw it right on the 50 on the sideline. Instead, we go try to play hero ball. And it's there. I get you. I mean, this this if you, we make this throw, this thing is awesome. But this throw needs to be like to the 10. I still think we could just flip our hips and make that throw. It'd still be a great... I mean, it's, it's going to be a miracle. It's going to be a hell of a play one way or the other. But just throwing up one of these types of interceptions when there was a guy wide ass open from the design of the play makes it even worse for me. So, you know, this this is oh, I do love that chip though. How about that tight end? Boom! Get off me. But man, it doesn't even look like he's looking at the corner. I mean, maybe he is. Gosh. I just feel like that the pressure from the right tackle is not significant enough where you can't step up, step over, and make that throw to the corner. Looks like he just, everything is just a little blurred. Again, I mean, flip your hips and make that throw. I love the aggressiveness. I love going to try to make that play. Just give yourself a shot. Last one here. Big interception on a dagger up top. Just way too much of trying to force a ball in to a hook defender that's just getting way too much depth. The ball has to be checked down here. I mean, it's one of those things where I know you, you got to feel like you got to make a play to get yourself back into it. But this is, there's plenty of time. There's no reason. I mean, there are reasons to try to force it. But right here, you just got to take the check down. You just can't allow yourself to get into this hero ball world of them trying to, you know, this is a simple concept. I mean, I'm telling not simple. He's run this many times in his life where we're, we're getting this big deep in. We're getting this clear post. We're getting the chip here and we're into the flat. And really all this is, is reading this guy. If he gets depth, you check it down. Hopefully he hangs in here, sees this check down, comes down and we can wrap it right behind his ear. But and this is, this is a simple misread trying to force the ball in, just trying to make too much of a play here on a little Tampa 2, trying to make it look like closed, running out to Tampa. I mean, maybe if you let that window, if you could use your eyes a little bit more to like look off to the flat, that that window's coming open. But man, that hook defender just played it perfectly. He's running the route better than the wide receiver. You can see the check down. I, I think that's the part that's super frustrating when you play quarterback. You go back and look at these mistakes and you're like, gosh, I just got greedy. If I just would have checked it down, yeah, it'd be third and medium to long, but we'd still have the ball. So Trevor Lawrence, obviously rough go in Jacksonville. Obviously things are going on there that uh, <laughs> are causing a number of issues. And you got to find a way to play better. I think that's the thing that kind of comes away from the video more than anything else for me. Yes, it's a dumpster fire on a number of different levels, or at least it appears that way from a distance. 
and we got to protect the ball and we got to be a little bit uh, smarter with how we design some of these things and what we're asking our quarterback to do. So all of the above there as far as what's going wrong in Jacksonville. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully we will see you back next time. I appreciate it. Have a good one.